Thank you so much, Moab. How's everybody doing today? We're live. It's lagging out. How is everyone doing? On a chocolate high. You're on a chocolate high. Well, I envy you because it's Easter, so you're obviously on a chocolate high. And I want to mention we have a special guest host or guest coming on today, Um, one of my old school buddies and CEO of... (laughs) (laughs) I was was waiting for him to answer. Ghost Machine, uh, Neil Nellens. What's up, Neil? Appreciate the dramatic pause. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know me. I I love the drama. So (laughs) just want to let you guys know we are brought to you by thegamergloves.com. Save 50% on your next pair of Gamer Gloves at gamergloves.com with coupon code LAGGINGOUT. Um, one of our other affiliates, Cursed Underground Gaming. Want to join fun and competitive gaming community? Then you should join Cursed Underground Gaming. If you're interested in freeform, structured, or even pro branch, look no further. Like their Facebook page at Cursed Underground Gaming. Um, let's see. And also one more, one more uh, affiliate, Fierce Gaming Females. They support all gamers. If it's Xbox, PC, PlayStation, these ladies will post about it. Check them out on their Facebook page, Fierce Gaming Females. I have, like, pages of notes that are not on our production notes that I need to go over. Um, Everyone's wondering where Funny Guy is. He's running a little late. He'll be here as soon as he can. He's fighting the L.A. traffic. So as soon as he gets in, he'll come in and actually take over the uh, Q&A part. But for right now, we're going to do news with Funny Guy minus Funny Guy. There's a lot of stuff going on Facebook. Uh, we just hit. Um, we we only have like 1,200 likes on Facebook, and we now we know why. Um, there's a movement going on. That's actually going to help that the pages fight back, go blue. Not heard about it. You not heard about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, lagging out is actually part of this movement. We got invited by um, Amanda Wetzel, who's actually produced all this and uh, got everyone together. I think there's close to 5,000 pages that are participating June 1st. It's a worldwide international event to pages of Facebook. They're preventing our fans from seeing our posts and adding their news feeds. On June 1st, 2004, pages around the world are actually coming together and, vo- and voicing their dislikes, basically. Um, what basically the movement is is that if you have a page, um, you go blue with it. Um, go to Pages Fight Back. And I'm sorry, I'm hearing reverb. Um, pages Fight Back. Um, do not post on your page. Say we're part of the um, Pages Fight Back movement because essentially Facebook wants to um, Facebook essentially wants us to pay for everything for advertising, and they've actually reduced the organic feeds to six percent. Um, it used to be at eighty, and then they've been dropping it periodically over the past few years. And now you're only going to get exposure for like. 12% and they're going to drop it down to 6% because they're going to make you pay for advertising at this point. Um, I know uh, our guest Neil um, has a new company. We've been out there for a year and that affects the small guy, the little guy. Um, how do you how do you guys feel too? How do you feel about this, Zombie? Um, I think it's kind of sad actually because um, it's supposed to be a social media site. So I want to know um, when are they going to start making us pay for our own like personal pages? Really? Well, I mean, since they've been traded publicly, uh, I think they have to find a way to uh, add more revenue. But I think their stocks are up too, and uh, so I think I think they're just trying to way, but uh, trying to actually accumulate more capital. But with people that have fan pages, you know, like people like like movies, like sci-fi movies, or they like conventions, or they like sports, or to that effect, um, why why should these pages actually have to pay for exposure if they're just doing it for fun. So right. Why, why should I have to pay for people that are interested in the content that I'm publishing? You know, you it's know, just not fair. Either way. Right. Um, you guys play PC games at all? That's all I play. <laughs> the Twitch stream knows me. That's all I play is PC games. Okay. Well, you might want to you might want to check out the game that Neil's promoting. How's that for a segue? 
Awesome. Let's in, let's introduce Neil again. Neil, Neil is the CEO of Ghost Machine. Um, you can check them out at www.ghostmachinestudios.com, and they're promoting a game called I gotta scroll down because it wasn't there. Superbike TT. Please really? welcome well, Mr. Neil Nellens. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry, I should have had the applause here, but. Uh, Neil's in the house. <laughs> Neil's in the house. Neil's got 14 years of professional game experience after graduating with a BFA from computer animation at Ringling College of Art and Design in Sarasota. Everybody thought they were getting into filmmaking. Lo and behold, everybody yeah. ends up in the game industry. Yeah, well, well, I mean, you, honestly, you know, it's really, oh, you have a yeah, later earning a digital cinematography scholarship from Hollywood Visual Effects Studio. Really, when he was, he, was also in where you also interned. Yeah, it's amazing how the gaming industry is actually more home based than the movie industry now it now is. So I keep on getting uh, text messages from Funny Guy. So whenever he gets here, when he gets here. But uh, well, I mean, you were just asking about games. Uh, I was playing this one on the Xbox called Rise: Son of Rome. Oh yeah. Which I wasn't super excited to play, but I got a copy of it and checked it out. It was actually much better than I expected, and the animations in it were really top quality. Like, it's it's almost like games have surpassed the production values of CG features. Yeah, it has, and it. I think I think they're actually right there with each other um, as far as production values is concerned. Um, so I, I just find I find that amazing that uh, it to me it looks like it Rise looks like to me the quality of Blizzard. Um, I'm not sure who produces the game offhand, but uh, it re just reminds me of Frozen Throne and World of Warcraft, and the quality is like you said, it's very high quality. And um, just from the uh, pre-rendered stuff I've seen on TV, it just looks absolutely amazing. If you would get, go ahead. They use Crytek on it, and there aren't that many games really that are using that engine now. So it's interesting just to see what you know new bells and whistles they're adding to the render and what they're achieving with that. It is now. If you were to rate it from one to five, what would you rate it, Neil? Oh, uh, the Crytek. The uh, Rise. Uh, I would rise. say probably a four. A four. I'd, I'd give it a strong four. If you like hack and slash games. That's the caveat. If it, I mean, there's only so many times you can slash a guy's head off, you know, and it feels satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> and I if have you're to disagree on that. That's a lot. Then <laughs> I think he's going to deliver the goods. <laughs> so it has a story mode, though. So the story is well, not yeah, really. That's what I've been playing. It, it's a beautiful game. So I just it, more enjoy running through the environments. You know, I, I try to get to the end of the game as quickly as possible. That's usually my goal. So I put uh, on the easiest. I'm a total pussy. I put on. <laughs> you, you don't. You don't put it on hard. In three hours, <laughs> if I can. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I like the. I don't know about you, Neil, but I enjoy the. I enjoy the story parts of those games. So I like to. I, I'd like to see the pre-rendered stuff rather than playing the game. Oh, so. the same way, you know. And that, that's the animation. So they started to do the facial motion capture and everything, and uh, the performance actually comes through. It's you know, it's pretty interesting. This is something we you couldn't do at home, and people actually take for granted now. Um, being on silicon graphics machines and O2s and Indigos and Octanes back then, uh, these computers were ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in the mid to late nineties, and now people can actually do this stuff on their laptops, and they don't know our pain. They don't know what we went through. It was a lot. It was a lot of work to actually do it back then, and uh, like Neil eloquently said, it was essentially just an array that actually just Frame by frame did there, and it's like Ringling graduates that have Academy Awards. So I'm kind of like chronically depressed about that. I don't know Are about you talking about uh, Ringling is in like Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. <sighs> How many times have you heard that? Neil? What the cat drug in? Look, Look the cat drug. I didn't even have time to print notes. <laughs> please, but, please, okay. please we welcome. Got it under control. <laughs> Need you for your voice and your Cobra Command. But then, but John Ringling started the school. It's the same guy from Ringling Brothers. So. Oh wow! See, so there is. So then, my comment wasn't completely irrelevant. Not at all. 
<laughs> see how I do that? Plugged in, we didn't even know. <laughs> you didn't see my picture pop up down there? Okay, and you worked on Medal of Honor, which was the game that kind of, after Doom, brought me into gaming. I actually was lucky enough, uh, or did you happen to work on um, Airborne? That I did not work on. That was the fourth, as far as I remember, that was the fourth Medal of Honor. Yeah, I think it was the fourth or fifth one. I think it was the fourth one, because after that was, um, it was like a Modern Warfare type of uh, Medal of Honor. Okay. Right on. And the games that you guys are developing for the Oculus, are these you know, first-person shooters? What types of games are we talking about? And uh, feel, free to, feel free to expand upon it. Uh, the the first game that we released, um, or at least released a demo of it, we're still in production on it. It's called Superbike TT, and it's a motorcycle time trial racing game. Um, so it's first person in the respect that you're sitting at the um, on a, on a superbike in the race, and when you look around, then everything is from the perspective of the rider. Um, and then we've got uh, a new game that we're working on called Motorsports. Kind of like Hang On. Uh, what's that? Is it kind of like Hang On? Similar to Hang On. Yeah. I love that. I love those. I love those motorcycle games. By the way. But yeah, we're working yeah, on sorry. a car racing a game, and we've got two unannounced projects. Uh, one being a, a shooter, first-person shooter. Um, but it's sort of a unique take on it that uh, you're you're in a locked um, you're in a locked turret, not not really moving around a traditional first-person shooter style. And another one that's <clears throat> that's a flight sim. Oh, very cool! I was gonna say driving and flying. I would think would be like probably like high demand too. I, I have to assume that. I mean, it, it, this type of stuff already is being used uh, by the military. So um, the guy that, that created Oculus, he had previous experience with military contracts and developing VR. Uh, things like the newly produced um, aircraft, uh, th the pilots actually use VR helmets, and there's cameras positioned on the bottom of the aircraft so that when they look down in the cockpit, they can see through the plane and see any oh, wow. other planes that are approaching. They have a 360 oh, awesome. degree view, um, and it's using a similar technology. It's a, you know 3D virtual reality tracking. And do you um, have you had your have you had a chance to have your you know obviously you've worked with it, but like uh, um, have you done have you played any other things other than what you're working on on the Oculus yet? And your uh, yeah, on what you've one seen? thing that uh, Oculus does that's really good is they have a share um, area, which is sort of like their version of Steam, which allows yeah. developers um, to put up games and demos that they've made for the Oculus, and you can play them. Most of them are free. Um, they have a they have a policy that you have to at least include a free demo if you're featured on the share site. So All right. some are paid Fair games, enough. but for the most part, they're free games, and um, that's the best way to get sort of an overview of what's available right now. Now I know uh, funny guy was talking about popular and high demand games for the uh, Oculus Rift, but uh, a lot of games like with the rise of YouTube stars like Markiplier. And I don't know, like Smosh and all those YouTube uh, let's plays. Um, they always he, they've been getting into scary games. Like we walk around in a haunted mansion or something through like a rift, the Oculus. Like, do you see yourself doing one of those in the future? Yes, we do. Uh, that's that's awesome. one of the most popular genres uh, right now, uh, especially for Oculus games because of the s surrounding aspect. Um, of the of the headset, it's it translates horror games very well to to the platform. Real quick, if you're just tuning in, this is lagging out. I'm Funny Guy with Chieftain, Zombie Killer, and Moabiti, and our special guest tonight is Neil Nellens, CEO of Ghost Machine. That's GhostMachineStudios.com. Little shout out to our sponsors. Special thanks to Gamer Gloves. Be sure to visit them at the Gamer Gloves. Use the coupon code lagging out. We are part of. Cursed Underground Gaming. If you want to join a fun and competitive gaming community, join Cursed Underground. We've got more than a thousand members, and if you're interested in a free form structure or even pro branch, look no further. Check us out on Facebook. That's Facebook.com/slash Cursed Underground Gaming. And uh, 
a uh, special shout out to uh, one of our affiliates, uh, the Fierce Gaming Females. Uh, they aren't just they don't just support women; they support all gamers. So relax, guys. Uh, if it, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, PC, uh, these ladies post and talk about it all day long on Facebook. Be sure to check them out on their page. That's facebookcom females. Now back to the show. Welcome back, Chieftain. There's a rabbit on the screen. Happy Easter to everybody, by the way. Happy Easter. And, this and is happy, Chieftain, buddy. And, and happy oh, 420. Everybody. You know who you are. <laughs> oh, and uh, happy um, happy Passover too. Yes. I, you know, it's weird Happy because Passover I, to our well, I made a post on Facebook today, and one of my cousins, he goes, well, you know, it is Passover, too, in a sense. And, uh, he, is. um, and, and, but, but the thing is, is I didn't get on Facebook on, on Passover, so I didn't wish anybody a happy Passover, because I wasn't on when it started. How dare you? No, I don't know. How bad? That. You're awful. You're awful. I ate some matzo, yes. Chief, Chief and Bunny does not approve. Chief and Bunny, thank you for all the awesome candy, man. That was great. You're very welcome. At least someone actually appreciates me. You're welcome, Zombie Killer. So, the old uh, Easter Bunny come to your house? You know, on <laughs> Facebook, I've seen a lot of pictures on Facebook that just have it's Easter eggs, and then they're open, and then a bunch of people laying on the ground with those aliens face eaters on them. I don't know where why those are everywhere. <laughs> I saw a bunch of eggs being Chief like, Bunny does not approve of this. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> By the way, I read an article. This is an interesting Easter story. I read an article. I love Easter stories. Yeah, Please I read us. an article. I read an article. <laughs> <laughs> I love your um, character. Um, I keep going. Well, you know, you know how uh, I like it. You know how um, uh, kids when they go to like Easter events and they they have to go hunt the eggs. And they're right. always worried about one kid finding like all the eggs and other none of the other kids finding them. So now what they're doing at events like that is you get a colored basket, and your job is to find the eggs that match your color of the basket. That's, That's racist. We did that when I was like three when I went to. A well, church but it was it was on MSN, and I've never really been on. You know, I've wait a I've second. You get your stuff. news from MSN. That's still around. Yeah, it's still. Man, around. that's for old people. Jeez. I mean. And I'm I mean, gonna, I got a birthday coming. Do you up. still check out Netscape too? Is that your search engine? Oh. <laughs> um, first of all, Netscape was a browser. Whatever. Whatever. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> you use your. He still uses the AOL account. It's funny guy at AOL. On dial up too. That's why we lag out. <laughs> the squirrel chewed through the phone line again, folks. Oh, I don't know. Sounds like a thief to me. On I don't that know. note, Chieftain Bunny is heading out like a fetus. We'll see you well, next Chief year. Chief and Bunny, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I have a couple questions for Chief. Well, no, well I, I don't have enough. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Do you know Sonic? What's like the first game that you played? Um, I'm always curious to what makes, you know, when I work in the industry, the guys who do art and everything, I'm always curious, like, what was that game that kind of made you go, man, I, I want to be part of making these things? It's hard to say because how planned on getting into films originally, um, so I never really envisioned working in games, but uh, after we got out of college, um, you sort of scanned across what different opportunities, what different jobs you could get, and it seemed like uh, the Medal of Honor project would be the most interesting thing to work on. So um, the first game though that I've, that I've finished and I really remember playing was Metroid, the original Metroid. So that's so cool that you worked on the you worked on the the first Medal of Honor, am I correct in that? The first Medal of Honor on the PlayStation One. Wow. Like you know what, man, I used to entertain people playing that game. I remember you could go around and shoot Nazis in the game and everybody thought it was funny. So they when I would play it they'd all be watching me like comics because 'cause I've been a comic, I take my PlayStation on the road. Okay. And, now uh, how funny guys are robot. Oh, now I'm a robot. <laughs> you know what? We titled this show so appropriately when we were coming up with a name about a year ago. <sighs> who would Who would have thought that we actually hit 100, 100 subscribers in an only two years? People, people yeah. right now are thinking we're doing this on purpose. People right now. I'm doing this from my iPhone. 
Yeah, we're doing this on purpose. Yeah, our goal is to and our goal is to give you half of a sentence while we're here. Um, we like doing a crappy no show every two weeks. <laughs> I'm super proud of my backdrop. Chieftain, let me ask you something. Um, yeah, what's up? We didn't, we didn't talk about it last show, but did you know that PAX is going to Texas? Yes. Yeah, I heard about that. 2015, they're having PAX and it's opening up in Texas. If did still, you get to get, are you going to PAX this year, yeah. Neil? PAX West. Uh, I was I was not planning on hitting PAX, um, but I will definitely hit PAX South when uh, they kick that thing off next year in Austin. Or oh, it's in San Antonio, isn't it? I think it's in San Antonio. I think you're right. Well, that'll be good to have, have one in the South anyway. Yeah, that's great. Will we see you at E3? Will you be at the E3 this year or next year? Uh, most likely not. Uh, usually, do not go to E3 um, because it's more consumer facing than developer facing. So we're not drinking enough to get a booth at E3. I understand. No, it's uh, it's it's different. It's it's um, I've been to several different gaming things throughout my time working in the business, and it's um. It's definitely consumer oriented for sure, um, and it's fun. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I also the last time I went was the last time that the public was allowed to go. So I get to go back for the first time this year. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking to see how different it really is. So E3 has gone through tons of iteration, though. I mean, over the years. Yeah. I mean, when Joe and I were in school and got out, they held it in Atlanta. So uh, we do a trivia question at the, if you're just it's the first time you're watching the show. We do a trivia question at the end of every show, and what that does, first person to post the correct answer on our Facebook page right after we post the question, um, gets their name entered into a hat to win at the probably right around I would say what probably like Thanksgiving usually when we knock off. We'll have that question in a minute. He's trying to join back in. I want him yeah, to Yeah, we have all story. kinds of stuff. Like, what was it, the, um, the iPad covers? Yeah, we've got what iPad. There's, there's there's iPad covers. There's mouse pads, um, T-shirts, water Keep bottles. Keep that away from Catwoman, um, hint, hint. Are you, are you holding up all this stuff, Moab? Is that what you're doing? Oh, you're, he's showing it on the camera, but they can't see him unless he has the camera because he's our engineer. Whoa. so. He I might be talking about it. He's trying to give that as he's playing pictures. I was showing it. Pretty much. The Twitch people can the, the Twitch people can see, so that's what I'm doing. Ah, okay. See, okay. I need to know this. If I try to look at our Twitch channel, it's kablooey from. So the point so. is, we get some really cool stuff uh, to give away to you guys, but um, but you basically got to answer uh, Chieftain's trivia question. Yeah, and if you watch our channel when Moab's playing from time to time, we do. Uh, he does give away prizes and stuff like that, so it's worth it to watch our channel. Everybody oh, always tries to win something. There's one of the T-shirts so, he's showing right now. Um, so pretty much, um, so the question this time that nobody, um, nobody even tried to answer it. We want to know who is Chieftain's favorite female villain. Mm. And um, we had the choices of. Um, you know, I should know this. I had and to he probably said it last show, and I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he probably said, intent. I probably said it this show, hint, hint. I probably said it this show. Yeah, but I wasn't here for the first 20 minutes, so... I, I just said it now. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I caught so it. I'm see, Earth, see Eartha, it Kitt played, Eartha Kitt played her in the original well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. TV show. How come we're giving, you're giving people multiple choice questions? I never got to give people multiple choice questions. <laughs> you're also not there to write the trivia questions. I do not approve! Hello, the Joyce must watch the show. What's Neil Nellen's favorite watch it, it out. movie? Every other Sunday. That's, that's, that's it. Old. I, I want to apologize to my uh, old classmate Neil for dealing with us and all the issues. So I want to thank Neil for Guy. being here. <laughs> thank you for putting up with us, Neil. I appreciate it. No worries. Very and my nice. answer to the question is Octopussy. Uh, ah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> Your favorite James Bond movie? Doctor No. If you were stuck okay. on a desert, all right, lightning round. If you're stuck on a desert island, you had to play one console and one game. What would it be? Hmm. 
Don't worry about the common sense stuff like that. Like choice choice questions. Nobody needs. No, no, no. We do have internet. We and stuff. But you get one platform, one game. I would probably go with Half Life multiplayer. Ooh. That's not when you're talking about Half Life. Are you talking about like Ares mod Half Life? Are you talking the original? Um, t- the original Team Fortress inside the original Half Life. So, okay, very good choice. Very good choice. <laughs> I will tell you, since our Twitch chat has been answering the one console, one game, um, by Twitch chat, I mean Amanda. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Um, Thank you. She Amanda. says uh, PlayStation for the Assassin's Creed. So I'm assuming the newest PlayStation. We'll give her that one. And then the newest Assassin's Creed. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and leave that in the comments, which one you'd be stuck with. And on Twitch, leave that in the Twitch comments as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, good idea. I like that. So I want to thank you for being here, man. Really appreciate thank you taking you. the time. No worries. Um, if you're watching us, be sure to visit our sponsors. TheGamerGloves.com. Use the coupon code lagging out. L A G G I N O U T. Save yourself 15% on your next pair of gamer gloves. If you're looking to sponsor the show, be sure to visit our website or drop us an email. Lagging out. Gmail.com. Also check out Complete Gamer. Uh, LV. Make sure you uh, follow them on Twitter. Um, we're going to be doing some promotions with them. They're going to actually have a gaming uh, boutique in actually Las Vegas, and we're going to be doing stuff with them. Uh, Funny guys actually closest to them. They want us actually to come for an opening. So um, they, they, it's going to be an internet cafe, gaming cafe, and it's really awesome. Um, it's not written in the notes. In I apologize. What? It, in LA? Uh, it's in Las, Las Vegas. Oh, uh, that's not exactly nearby. No, it's not. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they want us there for an opening. So I'm going to see what I can do. Yeah. So Sounds thank you, good. thank you guys, complete, uh, complete gamer. You know, if you need volunteers, I've always wanted to blow all my money in one night. <laughs> okay, your turn. <laughs> they're, they're, they do a lot of good uh, charity work. They actually deal with, uh, they actually work with Gamers Give Back, which is another gamer charity, which um, they're actually going to be helping us with lagging out cancer uh, in October. So there's going to be a bunch of us doing uh, T-shirts and stuff and trying to raise money to beat breast cancer. So um, thank you for them for help supporting our cause that's actually going to be going on in October. Go ahead. I know you yeah. wanted to. Go ahead. Yeah, but it out. <laughs> Cobra, watch, watch the show. Subscribe. Let's what? just try to let's try to get uh 200 more likes and uh, 4,000 more followers, and I'll shave my head live on the show. <laughs> 100 more likes. That means I only need to make 100. 100 more uh, subscribes. I mean, subscribes. On I that. just got to make 100 uh, fake email accounts. <laughs> if we're like yeah. three. Yeah, those- those don't count on I think it's time to go. <laughs> Amen. Aw, oh, man. Don't forget, guys. Go blue. Go blue. Go blue June 1st. On behalf of Funny Guy, Neil, Zombie Killer, and Moab, we'd like to thank you for stopping by, lagging out, and game over, guys. Mm-hmm.